Hello everyone. Welcome to episode 7 of Microsoft 365 Security Administrator course. In this video, we will be looking at another very important topic in Microsoft 365 Security Administrator. So when it comes to security, access management is really important. Let's look at what Microsoft 365 has to offer in terms of access management. Under this module, we will be looking at four subcategories known as conditional access, managing device access, role-based access control, and solutions for external access. One of my previous videos, I have already discussed about conditional access. Conditional access is a feature comes with Azure Active Directory and most of the Microsoft 365 subscriptions are capable of using this as a part of their subscription. The reason is many Microsoft 365 subscriptions comes with Azure Active Directory premium sub version or premium subscription. Whereas some of the Office 365 subscriptions comes with Azure Active Directory basic or standard version. So if you have Microsoft 365 uh, E3 or E5, you have Azure Active Directory premium subscription. So in that case, you can use conditional access and you can apply number of policies to protect your applications or enterprise based on an IP addresses, based on the device operating system versions and so many other policies. I have discussed about this or conditional access in one of my previous videos. I have given the link down there. You can go and have a look uh, if, you if you don't have a better understanding on conditional access. So in this video, we'll be looking at managing device access role-based access control and solutions for external access. Let's begin. First, we'll look at managing device access. As I explained earlier, Microsoft 365 is a combination of three products. It includes device management capability. So within that, let's look at what we can do using Microsoft 365 device management capability. The capability really acquired from Microsoft Mobile Device Management feature, which is known as Intune, which is part of Azure. But within Microsoft 365, we have something called Endpoint Manager, where we can access and control up to certain extent of the devices that we have within our environment. Let's look at Endpoint Manager. If you look at Endpoint Manager, it's part of Microsoft 365 Admin Center. If you go down, you would see under Admin Centers, Endpoint Manager. Early it was Microsoft Device Manager. Now Microsoft has renamed this as an Endpoint Manager. So this is that. So you would see the devices and this is my dashboard where I would see number of options down there. And if you click on devices, you would have multiple options starting off with enrolling devices. Also Endpoint Manager supports different range of operating systems including microsoft windows of course because as i explained windows 10 enterprise is part of microsoft 365 so it supports windows enrollment where you can enroll your windows 10 device which is joined to the domain or non-domain joint devices and also you would see ios and ipad mac os and even android so these devices can be enrolled and controlled using Endpoint Manager. So if you look at here, so there are multiple options where you can enroll your device. Different operating systems provide different type of enrolling mechanisms. So once you enroll, you can enforce certain policies, including compliance policies, conditional access that I explained in my previous video and then configuration policies and different kind of scripts and also update rings if it is windows we all know windows 10 enterprise edition microsoft is releasing updates biannually which means twice a year and then uh, even you can enforce uh, enrollment restrictions configuring uh, the restrictions for enrollment it can be device type restriction or it can be device limit restriction where you can limit number of devices which you want to uh, enroll for your enterprise 
or you can configure device type restriction if i do let's say demo uh, platform settings are there so you would see you can allow a version of the device if it is android you can say this is the minimum version and this is the maximum version number and then uh, you can configure the ownership based on the ownership and even manufacture so these are enrollment restriction policies where you don't want to enroll older operating systems to your microsoft 365 environment so you would see pretty much you can configure uh, various configurations and also uh, you can enforce certain you know device categories rules and uh, this is important uh, device compliance uh, you know you can configure certain policies i would show you some examples it's it loads up so you can configure uh, configuring let's say if it is windows uh, let's say android android device so you can configure certain policies to uh, android compliance uh, including encryption levels including passcode for the phone access and various also so this is pretty much uh, about uh, device access control using microsoft 365 as a part of microsoft 365 you would have microsoft endpoint manage admin center and also i would like to show you one more thing if you log into azure if you go into all services you can easily locate a service called intune here and also if you go into intune so as you notice now microsoft intune has moved to microsoft endpoint manager uh which is same so you would see here microsoft endpoint manage admin center and uh, this was microsoft endpoint manage admin center 2 which we were redirected through microsoft 365 so you would see now uh, as a part of microsoft 365 you would get endpoint access too and also if you want to you can subscribe for endpoint as an independent individual product so i hope this gives you an understanding about a device manager or device management in Microsoft 365. In this lesson, we will be looking at role-based access control. In Microsoft 365 and Azure, we will be configuring or providing permission based on role-based access control. Whereas previously, in our on-premises systems, we were looking at discretionary access control where we had subject and object simply object is a file or folder whereas subject is a user or group so based on that we configure mpfs permissions or shared permissions and users were given access based on their group or individual user but in cloud systems in microsoft microsoft 365 and azure we will be looking at roles rather than individual users or groups so when you configure roles of course, in Microsoft 365, there are predefined set of roles where what we can do is we can assign users directly for these roles. So once you do that, users will be inheriting the permissions already assigned to these roles. So there are two types of roles. One is administrative roles. Other one is user roles. Let's look at first in Microsoft system how it works. If you log into Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you can really easily locate roles. So if you look at roles, you would see the number of roles available in Microsoft 365 system. So these roles are predefined, as I said. So starting with a global administrator, which is uh, the role which has most power or most permissions and privileges in this case you would see the number of administrators that i have added as a global admin and if i want to add more you can click on there and you can search for a user and then you can select them as a, an administrators but when it comes to microsoft 365 and in general security we need to make sure the number of global administrators are lower as possible low number of global administrators because when it comes to security we need to provide least access to perform their role for an example if you have an administrator who would need to reset passwords we can make them as a help desk administrator or user administrator so in this way user admin you would see and then these users can 
uh, create or uh, context, create groups, add users, and then modify uh, user permissions and read certain stuff. So we would see what type of permissions that it would uh, the person would receive once you assign him as a user admin. So in this way, we can use these roles and also you can assign admins and also you can compare roles uh, on uh, role-based access control under Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So if you go into um, Microsoft uh, Azure, Azure Active Directory, if you click on there, you would find these roles, roles and administrators. If you click on that, you would see the same type of roles that we were seeing under Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Because here you would see the global administrator roles here, and you can see, you would see the eligible assignments, and the description would show you exact set of permissions that global administrator would have. So in this way, you can assign roles in Microsoft 365 or Azure in terms of administrator roles. Now let's look at user roles. In Microsoft Azure, there are three layers that you can define user roles. First one is on subscription level. So subscriptions are the way that you want to settle Azure subscription payments. So that is the topmost layer. So if you go and search for subscriptions and you can configure user access based on the subscriptions because in a single tenant you can have number of or large number of subscriptions. So based on subscription you can assign user permissions and then the next layer would be resource group level. So resource group is a logical container where you can create users within or you can create resources within so then based on resource groups you can assign permissions and the next layer would be resource level so as i said subscription levels permissions and the resource group level permission and the resource level permissions let's look at how we can configure them let's go into subscription first let me just go and select my subscription so I would see there is one subscription. When I click on that, it would take us this interface where it would show me the cost that I've spent or that I have, have to pay uh, the, my usage related information here. You would see I have spent some, uh, you know, my usage is this for uh, this one, this resource group, and then you would see the disk and few disks has and other services have consumed certain uh, resources so then i have to make my payment over it and then if you go in this the interesting area here during this session since our focus is on uh, role-based access control so if you go in there access control if i click on this you would see the roles and permission that i can assign for users so previously we discussed was administrator roles now here if you look at here i'm going to do role assignment and then i have number of roles under users so main ones are owner contributor and reader for any user you can assign this permission based on the subscription or subscription level resource group level or resource level so i'm on this particular subscription in my case i have microsoft uh, Visual Studio Enterprise uh, Microsoft Partner Network subscription so I can configure anyone as a owner let's say I select owner and then I can select any user created within this uh, subscription right and then what I can do is let's say if I'm gonna select uh, this guy uh, you can say um, even group this user I can make him as an owner for this particular subscription. Then what will happen is this user will be able to use this subscription to create resource groups or resources. Or else I can configure this user as a contributor. So the difference between a contributor and owner is owner will have something similar to uh, you know administrator rights where he can add another users as a contributors or readers he can provide permissions pretty much if you look at contributor he also will have something similar to the permissions that owner has 
The only difference is contributors will not be able to add additional users and make them as a, a contributors or provide assignment or permission assignment to another user. But other than that, he can pretty much use any anything like he has permission to do perform anything. But if you want to make someone as a reader, reader will have reader access for this particular uh, subscription. And there are more specific roles created within the role based access controller controls within uh, Azure. Uh, but these are the common uh, roles that we usually use. But other than that, if you want to give more specific permission to certain user, you can do so using here. Right? Let me discard this. And then if I go into resource groups, so these are containers or logical containers that we create whenever we create any of the resource you would see we need to assign the subscription and resource group so these are number of resource groups that i have created so if i go into this resource group again you would see the same option here so you can select it and same way you can assign any user as a contributor owner or user or specific or reader permission or specific uh, role and also, if you look at any resource, let me select a virtual machine in this way. Virtual machine is a resource within Azure. So if I select any of these virtual machines, again, you would see the same option. So in this way, we can provide or we can configure role-based assignments on Azure. So I hope you understand the administrative roles which are created within Microsoft 365 and Azure. And also, there are user roles created with, within Azure that you can configure users to have different type of permissions according to our requirement. So I hope in this video we discuss and you understand the device based access control and a user and uh, administrative roles that we can use to provide permission. So in terms of security, we need to maintain minimum number of global, global administrators and provide access based on other roles to more specific uh, access thinking about least permission policy so that's how uh, that are, that's uh, that's how we can maintain best practices or we can perform our administrative task in azure and microsoft 365 a quite effective way so i hope this video is informative and thanks for viewing and hope to see you with my next video